today that are out ill and their families are sick. Heal them with your healing hand. Lord, be with the lost in this world that we may go out and witness to them to bring them to you so they can see the glory in your heaven. Lord, thank you for everything you've given us and thank you for your son Jesus that he died for our sins on the cross because we are not deserving of this, but you had your only son to die for us to, so that we may, we may be in heaven with you and that all our sins are forgiven through him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs> you know, you see posted on Facebook, you see other, other places, Jesus is is the uh, reason for the for the season but you know we think of him as the baby in a manger we think of him at, at Easter time is uh, the God man that died on, on the cross but he is alive in heaven right now Amen. and but he's coming back one day and he's not going to be a baby or a sovereign servant he's coming back as a ruler a king the bible tells us that every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord and we don't need to forget that. We're going to sing the old rugged cross. On the hill.
Ain't me. Miss Beth is going to do a song for us now. It's Mary's song, Breath of Death. Breath 
Cowboy Church. I'm Reverend Travis Perry. I'm going to bring a message this morning about the birth of baby Jesus and what Christmas is really about. You know, with all the hustle and bustle we have today in this world, everybody forgets what the true meaning of Christmas is. It's not Christmas trees. It's not Frosty the Snowman, it's not Santa Claus, which all these things are nice and they're fun, especially if you're a kid. But the true meaning of Christmas is the birth of a virgin boy from God to be here on this earth to spread God's gospel and then die for our sins so that we might have everlasting life with God. If you want, you can get your Bibles and turn to lukewarm. Not lukewarm, but lukewarm. <laughs> I'm going to read certain parts of Scripture. I'm going to start in Luke 1, um, 26. Everybody have it? Say yee-haw. 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 Yee the Bible says in Luke 1, 26, In the sixth month, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of King David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you, are, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Could you imagine how Mary must have felt when this angel came down and spoke to her and said, yeah, you're a virgin, but you're fixing to have a child. This is going to be a holy child. This is going to be God's son. And the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. Sorry, my nose is running. And you are to give him the name Jesus. Now I did a little research on the name of Jesus and this is what I found that the, the word Jesus came from a Hebrew name, Joshua. This name had the meaning, the Lord saves. Just as Joshua had saved the Israelites from Egypt and brought them to the promised land. Um, and he, and he, scripture says, he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever his kingdom will never end Mary asked the angel how will this be since I am a virgin the angel answered the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even as your relative Elizabeth is going to have a child in her old age, and she was said to be barren in her, and is in her sixth month of pregnancy, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. 
may it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left. All right, now, let's see the scripture. All right, now I'm going to jump from that section in Luke to Luke chapter 2. It's listed in my Bible as Jesus is born in Bethlehem. In those days, Caesar, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Now this was the first census that ever took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register for the census. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of King David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. When, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for Mary and Joseph to the end. And there were shepherds living outside in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. The shepherds were terrified. Just think of that. If you're out there in a field with other shepherds, and you're watching all of your sheep, and it's pitch black dark, the only light that you have, you may have a little lantern, but really the only light you have are the stars. And then the lights from heaven come down and it would be awesome. But it would probably be terrifying. It says, the Bible says that the shepherds were all terrified. But I think it'd be a wonderful thing. Which I would probably be terrified too. And this is my opinion. Because if I was out there in the middle of a field and I saw a whole bunch of light and I couldn't tell where it was coming from, I probably think there was a UFO fix to pick me up, <laughs> but it was the lights from heaven. It was God shining down on the shepherds to let them know to have peace. All right. And it says, the, the angel said to them, to the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good, good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to men whom favor rest, whom his favor rest. When the angels left and went back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, this was awesome. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see what the angels were talking about. So they left. And they went to see the thing that would have happened, which the Lord told us about. <coughs> Nazareth was Joseph and Mary's hometown. They had to travel from Nazareth. It says in the Bible they had to travel, let's see, from Nazareth into Galilee to Judea then into the town of Bethlehem. In Nazareth, it was a very, very long way from Jerusalem. 
which is the center of Jewish life and worship. Mary, however, grew up poor and had all the characteristics that the people of those days, they all told her that she would be unusable, unusable by God for any major task, for anything. But God chose Mary for one of the most important tasks of obedience that has ever been demanded on anyone except for Jesus. So don't think just because of your race or your color or your ability or your experiences or your education even. It makes you an unlikely candidate for God to use you for his services. Mm -hmm. But you can't limit God. God knows all and he has all the power. God can use you for what he ever, whatever he needs you to do if you just trust in him. But Mary was God's choice to be the mother of the Messiah. Mary's life, having joy and having a baby, a firstborn son that would, the baby was going to be the next heir for King David's throne in the bloodline. Uh, but Mary's life and having a baby and the joy of having a baby and the uh, joy of, I don't know personally myself what the joy of having a new baby is, but you could ask Taylor, you could ask Lisa, you could ask Miss Ann, you can even ask Bobby what kind of joy it is when you have that first baby what feeling inside you have, what love you had for that child. Mary had this love, Joseph did too, but Mary, Mary's joy for this baby was, was out of this world. But, in her having this child, this God child, it would bring Mary much pain and much suffering. Her peers would ridicule her. Joseph, the man that she loved and adored, would come very close to leaving her because of being a virgin, having a virgin pregnancy. He did not believe. He did not believe what the angel had told Mary. He thought she done went out and messed around on him, but she did not. Mary explained it to Joseph, and Joseph believed. He believed in God. Um, and her son will ultimately be rejected by all people and then killed. However, when he was killed, he died for all believers. He died for our sins. And he died to be predecessor between us and God. Everything that we do and for the glory of God, and really everything that we do in our daily lives, we sin. I'm human, I'm going to sin. You're human. We're all human. We're all going to sin. And we're going to sin daily, probably multiple times a day. But through Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away. So God sees us as pure and clean. When Jesus died for us on the cross for the, our sins, so we may have everlasting life with God in heaven. Amen. Let's bow our heads for a prayer.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything you do, Lord, for, for all the blessings, for all the healings, Lord. And I thank you today even for the pain, even for all the heartache we have and all the, all the sin in the world, Lord. I thank you for everything. Lord, you are almighty. You do everything for a reason, and you do everything for your glory. Just thank you, Lord, and we love you. And be with us as we go through the rest of our service, Lord, with your supper. In your son's holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to continue with the Lord's Supper. Uh, people listening to us on uh, Facebook and YouTube, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The favorite verse of mine that, that, that Pastor um, uh, Travis just read to us was, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the uh, uh, saying which was told them concerning this child. When they had seen it, they went and told. <laughs> Cowboy Church, was a, we've always had a motto, come and see, now go and tell. We see that all through the, the story of Jesus. We're supposed to come and see and go and tell. We're going to uh, take the Lord's Supper today. If I can get to the right page here. Technology. Yeah. Even Google slow today. <laughs> okay, I said I was going to talk about ten things you were uh, wanting to ask about the Lord's Supper, but were afraid to 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 ask. Uh, First of all, before I get into that, why is it called the Lord's Supper or, or Communion? The Lord's uh, uh, Supper is also called the Lord's Table, Communion, or Supper's um, uh, Blessing and Breaking of Bread. In the, in the early church, after the church came in to being, it was called Eucharist, which means giving of things. Uh, the, word, the word that uh, some denominations use, uh, uh, M-A-S-S, Mass, uh, comes from the same word that they used for the Lord's Supper. Uh, it means go, it is discharged. So we're supposed to come and see and go and tell because our sins have been, have been discharged. Mm -hmm. If you want to read where, where Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, you can find it in uh, Matthew, Matthew 26 or Mark 14 or Luke 22 or 1 Corinthians 11. It's found in, in all of those. Right. What is the purpose of communion or the Lord's Supper? It's to commemorate the death of Christ. This do in remembrance of me. It's also to uh, signify, seal, and apply to believers 
all benefits of the new covenant. Uh, if you've been able to be here on 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 uh, Wednesday night Bible study, we have talked about the old covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, and we've talked about the new covenant that that Christ made for us. Uh, it's uh, shows not only that God is going to keep His word to us, but it's a time that we promise to keep our word to Him. All right. It's also a badge of our profession, just like just like baptism. Baptism is the first announcement we make uh, after we're saved. Uh, the Lord's Supper is a continuing an announcement. You say, I've accepted Christ as, as my Savior. I can participate in the Lord's Supper. And it also showed, shows communion between all of us. Uh, the 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 uh, the bread and 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 the wine is something that we can touch, feel, see, taste, but it's a uh, a uh, representation of what we're remembering, and it's a it's a, uh, a uh, remembrance of the person and work of Jesus Christ. It's all about Him. It's not about us. It's commanded. He said, do this. If I tell Bobby, Bobby, you do this, then I expect it to be done, right? I don't say, Bobby, if you feel like it. Bobby, suppose, you know, if you have time. Jesus didn't say that. He didn't say, if you have time, think about me. Have a little meal, you know. He didn't say, he didn't say that. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And we're to do it. He didn't, he didn't give us a specified time. We're just to do it occasionally. I think, and there's some denominations that teach every time you come <clears throat> together that you should do the Lord's Supper. Personally, I think it takes away from it when you do that. I think to do it occasionally makes it makes it a a special um, all time. And that's why we put so much into this today that it'll be a special time for you. Uh, I said that the bread and the wine is something that we can touch, feel, see, taste. We also ingest. It goes in inside of us. Just like when we hear God's Word, spiritually we're to ingest God's Word. And this this means the, the 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 same the same thing. Fourth, it's also a personal remembrance. Now it's not it is personal for me, but it's personally about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Everything that we're doing here today is about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not about anything else. It's not about all uh, even though it's a time that we repent, it's not about repentance. It's about the, the repentance that we receive through Jesus Christ. All right, it's a time of uh, our confession. I just said that. That it's a time that we know that Jesus Christ died for us. We know why he died. He died to pay the price for your sins and for mine. And in remembering, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I just read 
Luke 17. They saw what had happened and they told. We are to see what happens. We are to see what God's what God has done among us and we're to proclaim until he comes back in in the sky. Uh, this number number seven is very important. Uh, we're we're not to take the Lord's Supper in an unworthy fashion. Now, it has nothing to do with our worth. If it did, who here could take the Lord's Supper? None of us could. Because none of us are truly worthy. But it's about understanding the worth of Jesus and what he did for us. Mm -hmm. It's not a time to take this lightly. This, oh, that's just something we do. That's just a, uh, a uh, ceremony that we do at our church. You know, I'm just going to eat a cracker and drink, drink some juice and, you know, that's that. But we need to think about what that, what that means. We need to think that the bread represents the broken body of, of Christ and the Jews represent the blood that he shed for us on the cross. And it's about his, his worth, not about our worth. Uh, we're not to be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. If we should take this in a profane way, if we should make a joke about it or anything, it's a very, it's a very solemn time. It's a time that we need to place the importance of what it is on this time. And we're to examine ourselves. We're to test our, our motives and attitudes as we approach the table to be certain we're partaking for the right reasons and with the right understanding about what all of this, 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 this means. Uh, that's one, one reason that I don't believe children should partake of the Lord's Supper. If they don't understand, if they haven't ever come to a point in their life where they receive Jesus without being pushed or guided by somebody else, but they accepted Jesus as their Savior, then we are to take the Lord's Supper. Uh, and uh, finally, we need to understand that if we do not take the Lord's Supper properly, that we're putting our ourselves up for divine discipline. Wow. 1 Corinthians 11, 29 through, through 34. God looks on our heart, not what we do. So what what I'd like for us to do right now is just have a moment of prayer, a moment of silent prayer, and then I'm going, I'm going to uh, uh, pray. But let me speak to God right now. Whatever's on your heart, whatever uh, the Holy Spirit convicts you of, that's what you need to pray about at this time. Jesus, I bow before you in, in humility and ask you to examine my heart today. 
Show me anything that is not pleasing to you. Reveal any secret pride, any unconfessed sin, any rebellion or unforgiveness that may be hindering my relationship with you. I know that I am your beloved child. Having received you into my heart and life, and having accepted your death as a penalty for, for my sinfulness, the price you paid covered me for all time, and my desire is to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor Travis, would you come up and serve the bread for us? As I take the bread, representing your life that was that was broken for me, I remember and celebrate your faithfulness to me and to all who will receive you. I can't begin to, to fathom the agonizing suffering of your of your crucifixion. Yet you took that pain for me, you died for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your extravagant love and unmerited favor. Thank you that your death gave me life, abundant life now and eternal life forever. As you instructed your disciples, I too receive this bread in remembrance of you. And in the same way, as I take this cup, representing your blood poured out from a splendored cross, I realize you were the supreme sacrifice for all my sins, past, present, and future. Because of your blood shed for me and your body broken for me, I can be free from the power and penalty of sin. Thank you for your um, uh, victory over death. You took the death that I deserved. You took my punishment. Your pain was indeed my gain. And today I remember and celebrate the, 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 the precious gift of, of life you gave me through the uh, uh, blood that you spill. I receive this now. Let's pray. Each time I take communion, Lord, I want to uh, recommit my life, my heart, my thoughts, my everything to you. Fill me today with your powerful spirit. As I leave this place, help me to hold this fresh remembrance and the story that, 
that never grows old, close to my heart. Help me to share it faithfully as you give the opportunity. In your precious name, amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you all. He's got him a Hitler mustache now, hasn't he? <laughs>